So in this quick tutorial, I just wanted to discuss the uh, stringer inputs that we've uh, changed and modified in Sidewinder. Uh, we are still pretty actively working on this, um, so uh, definitely we are looking for some feedback uh, from from you guys, our users. Uh, let us know what you like, what you'd like to see added or changed or whatnot, um, but I'll just go through this real quickly. Uh, so if we just, um, you know, just open a new file here and run it. Um, oh, I guess we actually had a new file, that's just fine. Um, so if essentially the stringer configuration, we've just added a whole bunch of new options here. Uh, C simply means it's a continuous stringer, and then the number of idlers. Uh, G is a gapped uh, stringer, or a stringer with a spacing, I'll show that in a second, and they also the idlers. Um, so N00 is simply stringerless like this, so there's no stringers. Uh, we actually added this uh, nice little plus and minus button here. This only runs the stringer calc, so it doesn't run all your sidewinder calcs, but it's kind of nice because you can just jump back and forth uh, between a couple stringers just to see what the change is here, so that's kind of nice. Um, but for example, this uh, C3 uh, continuous stringer with uh, three idlers on it. Uh, let's just uh, uh, let's leave the one one scale for now. Um, C4, C5, and there's our G, our gapped uh, stringers. Uh, so up here, the scaling, this is just whether we want the scale to be one to one. It, if it's close, it always defaults to one to one. But like, for example, here, obviously, this is a bigger scale than, than here. So if I actually want to print them for whatever reason, if I'm just copying this to the clipboard to paste in a report or wherever you want to paste it, just scaling it one to one. Um, that's all. Uh, the first button is just shows the no change there, just shows the, uh, the cross-sectional view. This is one idler set, and that's two idler sets. Uh, we added a little bit of different information here, so that's no information. This is the information that we had before, just tonnage belt woo speed and so on and so forth. And then some information about the stringers. So this is what I want to talk about today. Uh, there's also this calculation checkbox here that shows a whole bunch of details, which I'm also going to talk about in a second here. Um, so let's, um, actually let's, I'm going to go ahead and open up just the incline decline so we get some v vertical curves too. So now we got some vertical curves and just run that guy. and. If I look at my stringers, um, so uh, again, G is just uh, whether we've got a gap in the stringer or not. Uh, the this, this stringer channel, you can right click and select from a bunch of standard channel sizes. Uh, you can enter the, uh, the cross-sectional moment of inertia. Uh, that's for stringer deflections. Um, what our frame width is here, uh, whether or not it's got hood covers, by default it's going to default to uh, hood covers, but essentially if we, we select uh, 135 or 180, that is um, essentially just going to change the mass. So it actually has got a bunch of defaults in here for, uh, for cover masses. Um, other frame loading, so this would be some other loads, be it snow loads or wind loads or some other, if you wanted to add some, uh, another load on your uh, stringers to, to calculate your, your forces, you can do that. Uh, the non-stringer length, uh, this is kind of nice. So, um, actually let me just jump to say, let's just go to like a G4 here. There we go. So if we look at this, we can see we've got uh, down here, this is, uh, here's our stringer length. So we've got a three meter spacing. So our actual stringer length is uh, 3250. It adds a little bit for those idlers on each end. Uh, and we've got a total of 152 stringer sets and the total stringer mass is 10,000 kilograms. Uh, we also have the leg spacing of two meters as well as a total leg count. Now if I compare that to the con continuous uh, four, if I go down to continuous four here and I run that, we can see that we've still got the same 152 stringer sets, but now we've only got 304 legs. Uh, but the loading on each leg is now much greater. Um, so, and we can look at that, if we look at our calculations here, we've got our stringer information, the span, the size, the mass, uh, as well as our frame information, and then we've got our stringer quantities, and so this conveyor happens to be 607 meters long. Um, this non-stringer length, um, I'm kind of debating on how we, we actually might still change this. I might enter this actually in the vertical profile or maybe even the conveyor profile. I might add another conveyor here that'll allow you to specify whether this section of conveyor is got stringers on it or if it's an elevated structure with, say, trusses on it or the loading point or, you know, something like that. 
that. So I think that might be something we might look at in the future. Um, but for now, you can just manually add that up and say you had a road crossing and a head, head um, uh, was elevated or whatnot. And let's say you had, uh, I don't know, 120 meters of the conveyor wasn't elevated. Uh, if I just enter that right here, in our quantities down here, it just takes the conveyor length, subtracts that off, and there's our number of our, our stringer sections. So that stringer count now is based on those stringer sections. Um, so this will essentially give us all of our quantities. If we go over and look at our stringer loads, now this is actually what the loading is on each one of these stringer sections. Um, so if we see this is all in kilograms per meter, so it's essentially our belt mass, our material, our flooded uh, 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 flooded uh, belt, which will, if you look, actually matches our structural flooded load case. Um, but then also our idlers and the idler mass for all the point loads. Um, here's our hood cover right there, defaulting to, to our hood cover uh, kilograms per meter. And then we also add, um, I've just added a line input for the convex uh, curves, because obviously the convex curves, uh, you've got a running tension or a peak tension that pushes down in that concave curve section, convex curve section, I'm sorry, on both the carry and the return idler. So this is the carry side, this is the return side. What it does is it just loops through all of your load cases or all your running load cases, um, uh, just looking at our uh, profile here, and uh, this conveyor actually has one convex curve, so it's going to be that curve, um, but it looks at all those, those your curves and what the tensions are along all those curves and picks the maximum one, and then does the same, uh, and then at that same location, it also includes the return tension for that location, so it picks the worst total overall loading, basically. Um, so that's, um, that's that value. And then if we summarize all of that and put that into a per idler um, load, so if we, obviously it's the idlers that are sitting on the, the frame. So if we take all those loads and put each of those point loads, um, what does that turn out to be? That's those values right there. And then if we take those and break them down, what we really care about is our leg loading. Um, there's the load on each of the legs. Now, I've, I've left the vertical curves for both running and the, the um, uh, maximum case just as a separate input. So you can, you know, if obviously for a worst case structure, it's going to be our flooded plus our maximum uh, vertical curve radius. But I've left them separate for now. Maybe I'll add another one that'll be max of this plus this or something to that effect. But for right now, those are kind of the, the end results, which are quite quite nice to have those right there. Um, and it's also summarized on this front page here. I've put leg loading 7818 and if we look at the calculations here that's obviously our full case. Again we might add, maybe I'll add flooded plus vertical curves or something on this front page. Again looking for feedback from you guys. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything. There's a few more. Everything's pretty um, pretty self-explanatory. Leg height. Oh, if you have an angle bracket, um, for example, if we had just a, a, a support bracket on the left side or the right side, or say we have um, a gapped idler and they're both on the outside or the inside. Um, just kind of nice it adds that. It actually also adds that mass to the legs as well. I estimate what size that would be and add that mass to the to the legs. Um, so that's all included. Um, sleeper height and, and width, uh, the return side offset is just how high that is. So most of this is all geometry that you can play with. Um, and we I do have all of the deflection calculations are also all completed and I'm planning on probably adding a graph um, maybe to the calculation page actually showing a graph of the stringer actual deflections uh, which I think will be quite quite nice. Um, I don't have it as of right now completed for um, if you have these brackets or not. Obviously if you have these black brackets so it's that uh, stringer deflection is going to change. So I haven't included that yet but um, but uh, the deflections are basically finished and they'll be, they'll be coming too soon. Um, I also would assume um, that uh, people using this you'd like to see this in the project page. Um, so there again, I'll be adding this to uh, the project information and we can go ahead and um, create a probably a structural um, uh, worksheet for that as well um, that you can output and summarize all your conveyors together. So I think that'll probably be handy. Um, but again, I'm kind of wanted to get this this in here for you guys to start playing around with and really get some feedback. Um, 
yeah, let me know your feedback. Talk to your structural guys. See what they'd like to see added. I mean, clearly this is not going to replace him. I mean, there's there's so many more details that go into this um, than what I'm doing right here. But certainly for preliminary engineering and whatnot, we should be able to get a, um, I mean, I really think you should be able to get a, a, a pretty decent design without having to get all of those guys involved and give them quantities and, and that sort of thing. So I think this, uh, this, hopefully will be beneficial. I know a lot of the conveyor guys don't do structures. They just give it to the structure guys and, and whatnot. But um, really go talk to them guys and, and get their feedback and, and say, hey, is there is there something more we can do as conveyor engineers to, to help you guys along? And the other way I see this too is possibly using it as a check once you get the, uh, you know, a design back and, you know, Obviously, conveyor designs always go through lots of iterations. You could actually go ahead and put in their channels, and you know, just kind of double check and say, "Yep, no, nothing's been missed. Uh, this is this is all looking good." And um, so, anyhow, have a great day, and uh, hopefully, you guys enjoy this. And and again, drop me an email.